I'm trying to tell the American people and the Republican primary voter, the only way I know to defend this country is to send some of us back to Iraq and eventually to Syria to dig these guys out of the ground, destroy the caliphate, kill as many of them as you can. Barack Obama's policies of leading from behind are going to allow another 9-11. And the only way to save us from another attack, they're large, they're rich, they're entrenched. If I'm president, they're going to be poor, small, and on the run. And that means we've got to work with the regional forces forces that exist right. going on the ground and destroy this caliphate. All right. Joining us now, former Congressman Alan West, president of the National Center for Policy Analysis. Hello, sir. Good to talk to you again. Hey, Steve's good to be with you. How are you doing? I'm fine. All right. So so to what Lindsey Graham, who announced yesterday uh, his 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 plan for uh, for saving us, stopping ISIS and, and, and ridding the world of them. You you buy into that? I think that it's important that we do uh, lead. I think it's important that we take the fight to all uh, militant Islamic terrorist groups and jihadist groups. And uh, I think that when uh, you know other countries see that commitment that we're willing to make, uh, they will join in. I've heard some people say that you know you're going to need a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. That's not the case. If you have the right type of resources, if you have the right type of strategic level goals and objectives, and you don't have restricted rules of engagement, and you're not sitting around concerned about collateral damage, uh, you will be able to defeat these people once they see strength, might, and resolve. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's move on to um, uh, another Republican presidential candidate announced today, and that's uh, former governor of Texas, Rick Perry. Now, the governor, unfortunately, he announced like very close to where you are down in the Dallas area, right? That's correct. Uh, our uh, NCPA headquarters is in Addison, Texas, and he was about two miles away. Okay, two miles. So it was obviously very hot, very humid. He, he announced in a hangar, oh, yeah. I guess. And the media, CNN, every time they talk about this, and I'm sure the other outlets as well, just like when Rubio made that speech and he grabbed for a bottle of water, the message gets lost, and they're talking about how he was sweating and progressively got worse and worse and soaked through his shirt, etc. I mean, I think that's baloney. I think that you shouldn't be pointing that out. Who the heck cares? He, he was in a 97-degree uh, humid atmosphere. But on the other hand, uh, Alan, uh, shouldn't he, they have taken that into consideration so that they, the message wouldn't get lost while he was sweating? Well, I think it's important that you think about all of the optics and the things that the uh, the left can try to pick at you about because that's what they're going to do. They're not going to talk about the message. They're not going to talk about the fact that he had a Medal of Honor recipient, uh, Mike Thornton, on the stage who, you know, participated in the only time when one Medal of Honor recipient uh, rescued another one, and that was uh, his dear friend Tommy Norris in Vietnam, both Navy SEALs. He also had Marcus Luttrell on the stage uh, with him, and he had uh, Taya Kyle, the wife of a Chris Kyle, speaking on his behalf. Yep. You know, I, I think that me if the you know knowing that he is the only uh, person that has you know had an active service in the uh, military as a C-130 pilot and graduated from Texas A&M University I would have recommended doing it down at Texas A&M University maybe in the Museum of the Corps of Cadets and talk about what he learned as far as the commitment to country and all of the great A&M graduates and their service to this great nation how he wants to continue on that lineage of service so uh, I think that you have to think about these things but just the same with Ruby when he reached for the glass of water, you know, that's the left. They're not talking about the metric system that Lincoln Chafee <laughs> wants us to go back to, which is the most insidious thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, that's his platform, I guess. All right, so, um, you know, we got quite a, quite a feel. By the way, you ever think, not now, I know you're, you're very happy where you are, but do you ever think and when you see the, 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 the uh, large size of the Republican uh, hopefuls, the field of hopefuls, do you ever say, you know, I would look pretty good up there? Nah, you know, you know, I look pretty good sitting right here <laughs> talking to you and and you know, thinking about the right type of policies for our economy, for our energy security, national security to get us back on the right track. So, you know, we all have a part to play. Uh, there are some people that want to be on the stage, but there are some people that have to go in behind enemy lines and, and do the dirty work in the battle, and that's why I'm glad to be the president and CEO of NCPA. All right, let's move on to, uh, to uh, Hillary Clinton here. And, uh, you know, it just gets e every single day. Every single day there is another revelation. Today we get the revelation that uh, the Clinton Foundation took money from an African church group or an African church that uh, you know calls uh, gays or homosexuals the devil. 
Uh, again, this should be, I, I bring this up because if uh, you know when a, when a Republican goes to speak at a university that has strong Christian ties and they try to marry that to to everything and anything that's ever been said by the head of that university here over and over and over and Bernie Sanders with his rape fantasy story that he wrote in the 70s the Democrats get a complete and utter pass no you're absolutely right the the duplicitous hypocrisy is beyond laughable and you know you think about how certain uh, members of, of the GOP uh, nominee cast are, are having to you know make statements about the fact that they were just you know in pictures with the Duger family uh, after that revelation. We'll see, you know, that never sticks with the folks on the other side, and it's amazing. But, you know, I believe that, you know, when you look at the numbers that talk about the trustworthiness of Hillary Clinton, you know, those chickens will come home to roost, if I can borrow the, uh, the words of uh, the, <laughs> Reverend, the dear Wright. Reverend from Chicago, yeah. Reverend Wright, yeah. Jeremiah Wright. Uh, it'll eventually happen. It's very early, but right now, when you see someone that is going out and not addressing these issues, not talking about the issues that are of care and concern to the American people, she's down in Houston, Texas, talking about voter equality and voting rights. Well, unfortunately, what she has to understand is the the level of minority voter participation has increased over the past national level election cycles. So, what is she talking about? Yeah. Totally out of touch. Not only that, that you know, there are two stories out. We got about a minute. Uh, the last 31 Gallup polls over 20 some odd years shows that uh, an overwhelming majority of Americans want abortion banned all the time or some of the time. And uh, the most recent Rasmussen poll uh, shows that I, I was on the top of my head. Oh, voting rights. Eight, uh, 76 percent, mm-hmm. uh, including 56 percent of Democrats favor voter ID. I mean, if you watch the media, you think that there's no way that was possible. Yeah, absolutely. You know, look, we have, with the technology that we have now, this is not back in the 60s or the early 70s. Uh, you know, the killing of babies, the, the Kermit Gosnells and things of that nature that happened, the late-term abortion practices, you know, that's, that does not uh, count to the better angels of our nature, as President Lincoln right. once stated. Right. So uh, I think that you're seeing a, a turn on that, regardless of what the liberal progressive yep. media says. It's always great to talk to you, sir. Thank you very much. We'll speak to you soon, Alan. Thank you. My pleasure, Steve. All right. Alan West, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, another Texan, or not that not that Alan is a Texan, but Tom DeLay certainly is, and he will join us, former House Majority Leader, when the Steve Malsberg Show returns. Don't go away. <laughs> 